my brothers and my sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We have come to this place to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so my brothers and my sisters, would you help us sing the doxology, praise God from me. Reverend Jared Britton Washington, and our first family is Lady Deronda Washington and Braylon JL. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Great is 
thank you for making me realize that had not it been for your mercy and your grace, that I would no doubt be cut off and gone. So God, for that right now, I just want to tell you thank you. God, I want to thank you that I'm found with a roof on my head and clothes on my back. Unbroken family struggle. God, for that right now, I just say thank you. God, I know if I had 10,000 times, I'd realize that I couldn't thank you enough. And I know, too, God, if justice had prevailed, that I would be cut off and gone. But God, again, God, I just want to thank you for your son, Jesus, who you gave and gave his life for me. God, I just want to tell you thank you right now. God, as I come before you, God, I come stretching my hand to you. Because there's no other help, God, I know. God, I come asking and thanking you for how you kept me and blessed me all down through the years. Up and down the dangerous highway, God, you kept hurt how the dangers were falling upon me. God, for that, I just want to say thank you, right? God, I want to say thank you, God, for how you kept us and shielded us from the storm and from the rain, keeping a roof over our head. God, for everything that you've done, I just want to tell you thank you, God. And realize, Holy Father, as if I had 10,000 tongues, I realized I couldn't thank you enough. But the one, oh God, that you gave me and that is not glued to the roof of my mouth. God, I can't give you enough thanks, oh God, and praise and honor and glory for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. God, in spite of all that's going on right now, God, we still want to tell you thank you, Lord. Can we realize, oh God, had not it been for you, most of us would be cut off from God. Lord God, we ask that you come and bless right now, oh God. You know what we have in need of, oh God, even before we are our word. God, we ask that you bless our pastor, bless this church, bless the whole Bell family, God. Bless those that are sick and afflicted wherever they be. Those that are dealing with situations, oh God, even the pandemic, oh God, all existing circumstances, oh God, we know that you're still in control. God, we pray that you don't leave us in time like this. God, we just want to thank you, God, for you being God all by yourself. And even the sacrifice that you made in your son, Jesus. God, thank you for allowing him to lay down his life for a wretch like me. God, we pray your blessing on this whole well church family, oh God. Bless those that are sick and afflicted everywhere. Those that have lost loved ones, oh God, may be in despair now. God, we pray that you touch, heal, and deliver right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask right now, oh God, in this season, when everything seems to be going down, oh God, turn it upside down. In the midst of us losing loved ones and hurt and having unconditional circumstances, oh God, we know that you are still on the throne, God. You promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So God, we just ask that you come now. Hear our cry in this season. God, we really love because to realize, God, that every day is going to have to bow. And one day we're going to have to stand before you and give an account of the days done in this life. God, we pray that you won't be done with us, oh God. That you will keep us now with your keeping power. God, we ask that you would just bless us with the blessing that we stand in need of. God, we just want to thank you now for everything that you've done in our life. Thank you for a strong arm of protection. Oh God, that you're keeping us from day to day. God, we pray too that you come with the plans of our heart. Help us, O oh God, in this season to be faithful doers of your word and not hearers of it. God, we pray that you will fill us full of your spirit. Allow us to give heed to him as he gives direction. God, we understand that we can't keep us ourselves. God, we ask that now that you just have mercy upon us. Help us with everything that we stand in need of, God. God, we just pray up this your holy name. Lord, we ask that you come and stretch out. God, we give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you've done and for all that you're going to do. God, we just ask you now in the name of Jesus that you fix our mind of God. Let the mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. That we may be able to do the thing that pleases you in your sight. God, we pray that a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit will be placed upon us, O oh God, that we will be doers of your word and not hear from. God, we understand that we can't make this journey. And Father, not for the long calling. But God, because we stand in need of you. God, we realize, oh God, 
that you've kept us through the storms and the rains and the hurricanes and the floods. You've kept us, oh God, thus far through this pandemic. But God, we ask it right now, Father, that you would just fix our heart that we will serve you in spirit and in truth. God, we understand that in our weakness, God, we can't make it. We can't do anything with us. God, I'm asking you to help us to be a living example to the world. Oh God, that someone will see you living inside of us. So we ask you right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you fill us full of your spirit. Help us, oh God, the mind to be in us that was in your son. Help us to be dedicated to your word. Help us to be doers of your word, oh God. That when we have to stand before you and give it a come. God, we may be able to hear you welcome the voice saying, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Oh God, come on up. That we will be faithful to us of your word. God, we thank you. We praise you. And we bless you. God, we pray that you never leave us nor forsake us. And you promise in your word that you would do that. God, we say, give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whatever you Happy Sunday, everybody. We made it through another week. Uh, we thank God for this Sunday. Our lesson today is God Jesus, God life. Our scripture is 1 John 5 and 12, which simply says, He who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I like milk, don't you? Ooh, that was good. Oops, I got, I better wipe my little mustache off. 
Perhaps some of you have seen those advertisements with famous people wearing a milk mustache and asking the question, got milk? Why are they saying that? And why are they doing that? Well, they're trying to get people to drink more milk. Why should they care if people drink milk? The reason why they are trying to get people to drink milk is that the milk helps the body become strong and healthy. Milk is a good source of calcium, which helps to build strong bones and teeth. The protein in the milk helps to build strong muscles and healthy hair. Other vitamins in the milk help to maintain the skin and helps you to stay looking young. Drinking milk is one of the easiest way to give your body the vitamins and minerals you need to grow and be strong and healthy. So you see, got milk is a very important question. I know another question that's even more important than got milk. In fact, it's the most important question you could ever ask anyone. Can you guess what that question might be? The question is, got Jesus? What does that mean and why is it such an important question? The Bible tells us that God has given us eternal life through Christ Jesus, his son. The Bible also says that he, he who has the son has life and he that does not have the son of God does not have life. Don't you think that the most important thing you could ask someone is whether or not they have life? After all, if you don't have life, you don't have anything, anything. So I have an important question to ask. God, Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the son of God and that he came to die on the cross for you and pay the price for your sins and mine, you've got Jesus. And if you've got Jesus, you've got life. So I have an important question. You got Jesus? Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for giving us eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that we have you. Amen. God, Jesus, got life. God bless. Be, be.
chapter number 10 and looking at verse number 46 that's the gospel according to Mark chapter 10 and verse number 46 as you look I just want to bless God for one more chance and one more opportunity to say a word for God I want to give God the glory the honor and the praise for all of the worship participants I want to thank God for the anointed vocalist sister Mahalia and all that God is doing in her life I want to bless God for the officers and the members of this church we call the House of Hope, a church I love so very much. And I want to thank God for my wife, Lady Deronda, and our daughter, Braylon, and the very blessing it is to serve as your pastor. It's preaching time, and the Word of God comes to us in Mark chapter 10, and looking at verse number 46, where the Word of God says, Then they came to a place called Jericho. And as Jesus and his disciples were together with a large crowd, they were leaving the city and a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus was sitting by the road and he was begging. And the Bible says that when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked Bartimaeus and told him to be quiet. But the word of God says that Bartimaeus began to shout even louder and say, Son of David, have mercy on me. This morning, I just simply want to talk to somebody from the subject that it's the mercy of God for me. It's the mercy of God for me. People of God, I have discovered that people don't have the kind of painful discussions with God that they ought to have. In fact, we live and breathe and reside in a world and in a time when people only talk to God when they need something or when times get tough. But I've discovered in my life that many times God is yearning for the people of God to simply have a conversation with him to show him how much they really love him. The popular author by the name of C.S. Lewis had a very keen perspective on what we call Christian pain. One comes to understand that Lewis had lost his mother at an early age and his father had emotionally abandoned him all while he suffered from a respiratory illness. 
The Bible and the Word teaches us when we study Lewis that all of this heartache and pain allowed Lewis to write the book called The Problem of Pain. In this particular text, Lewis said that pain insists upon being attended to, that God whispers to us in our pleasures, he speaks to us in our conscience, but God shouts when we're in pain. Pain is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. When I came to understand from reading this text called The Problem with Pain is that in the Christian context, God was purposed to always use pain to get our attention. That every time I go through what it is that I go through, it's God's way of trying to get me to understand that God is still right there with me. Pain and suffering, my brothers and sisters, goes hand in hand. But in every single pain, every piece of my problem, I have to realize that God is right there keeping me for such a time as this. We steer clear of any unction of pain because the modern church is focused only on the promise. We want joy, but we don't want the journey. We want gifts, but we don't want to do the work. But I believe it is my goal and witness to help somebody who's watching to understand that every pain that you went through was purposed to bless you. The Apostle Paul wrote, the power that I need is made perfect in my weakness. See, I believe you can't even taste and see the goodness of God if you never experience any pain. If it was my goal to simply preach about pain, I believe I would be here all morning long because every one of us has felt some pain at some point in our life. Some of the pain that some of us are dealing with is even pain we've experienced in the body of Christ. Some of us have been hurt in church, hurt by church and hurt outside of church by church people. Uh, that if the truth be told, the church ought to be the hospital, uh, but some of us treat it no different than our favorite hotel. Uh, but when I discover why my pain entered my life, uh, I mean when I come to terms with the reason that God gave me pain uh, and every issue I had to go through, uh, I come to the knowledge of the psalmist that pain allowed God uh, to show me that his word was still bringing me life. Uh, that God used every moment of my hurt uh, to teach me on his grace uh, so that he could set my affections on him. Uh, the very difficulty of this conversation uh, is that all of us need to have a conversation with God uh, where we first admit that we're coming from a place of pain. Uh, that under all the makeup, all the wigs, all the weaves, the suits and the ties, the Beamers, the Bentleys, and the Benzes, the Gucci, the Prada, the Louis, the Walmart, the Family Dollar, the Soup World, and the Cato, uh, that we are still a wretch undone, uh, that we are filthy in his presence, uh, but through it all, it is his power that's made the difference in our lives. Uh, and so my duty and task on this morning is to get you to understand that it is for the mercy of God for me uh, that is sustaining me, keeping me, and pushing me uh, when I'm even in my painful place. Uh, I don't need you to look at your neighbor. Uh, in fact, I don't know if there's even anybody in your room right now. Uh, I don't need you to high-five your pew mate uh, because you ain't sitting in nobody's church. Uh, but all I need is the other folk that know they need to talk with God uh, to begin to whisper a prayer for yourself uh, that God will hear me answer and deliver uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, see, everyone may not have the mental capacity uh, to hear your story, uh, but I declare they will feel the glory of God uh, and what God will do for you in this season of your life. Uh, I declare the very mercy of God uh, all over your life right now. Uh, somebody ought to type, yes, Lord. Uh, see, in the gospel according to Mark, uh, we find in chapter 10 that there is a conversation uh, that's beginning to happen on the subject of pain. Uh, see, before you can get to his mercy, uh, you need to feel his pain. Uh, the first thing God lifted for me to lift to you uh, is that pain will make the presentation. Uh, the difficulty that we need to understand right now uh, is that Bartimaeus didn't have much tact. Uh, Bartimaeus was not refined, nor was he a protect, pr practitioner uh, of common protocol. Uh, Bartimaeus was not like the church folk uh, who get up and say giving honor to God who is the head of my life uh, to the pastors, officers and members of this church uh, that was not Bartimaeus uh, he did not know the words to say that were flowery and refined uh, he just knew he needed Jesus 
Jesus. He needed a persistence, a level of determination. The Bible says that when he called out to Jesus, he said, Son of David, have mercy on me. That the people tried to shut him up, but they were unsuccessful. Child of God, there are people who love you and care about you. They see you going through all the things you're going through, yet and still they want you to shut up when it comes to the things of God. But what endures for me in this text, Mahalia, is that despite what the people thought you should happen about his pain, his pain was giving him a platform and it was giving him access to Jesus. His pain was in fact making the presentation on his behalf. People who cannot be real about what they went through are certain to die from what they had. The truth is that there is life in your testimony. The persistence and energetic nature of Bartimaeus is a good example of prayer. Bartimaeus was not discouraged because no one led him to Jesus. Those who told him to stay away did not discourage him. He simply wanted to get God's attention. And I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but I feel you're pulling on me in the Holy Ghost. You need to begin to say, God, I need all of your attention. See, when I declare that I'm going to trust God in this season of my life, I'm really declaring that I'm going to have the necessary conversation with God that will lead me to my breakthrough. There's an absolute power. Somebody ought to shout power in every believer's life when they push past the discouragement and get to God's attention. And I'm speaking over somebody right now that because you push past what people said about you and said you could not have and said you could not do that God is going to reward you for it. Because you kept the faith, God says I'm going to give you the results. Because you did not let go, God says I'm going to be everything that you need me to be. Pain has made your presentation, but God has blessed your life. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. And so the Bible says that Bartimaeus declares, have mercy on me. The second thought that came to mind is that God doesn't owe you anything. So many people forget that they are only this or that because of the God they serve. They take credit for what God takes second seat. They put everything before God and they expect God to bless their mess. Bartimaeus was blind, but he still knew that God didn't owe him anything. Readers of the text would say that why would Jesus respond to him? What do you want me to do? When it was obvious what Bartimaeus stood in need of. My study revealed to me that there is a power transfer. When Bartimaeus was humble enough to ask Jesus for specifically what he needed. See, in our difficult conversation, we don't say things like, God, I need money. But sometimes we simply need to say, God, my credit is jacked up. I'm overdrawn on my bank account. I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. The divorce has left me high and dry. The repo man is circling my driveway. But I believe, God, you can still have mercy on me. You don't say, God, I have cancer. Would you heal my body? But rather, sometimes you need to say, God, they diagnosed me with stage 4 cancer. There's no medication, no radiation, no chemo, no kind of therapy that can help save my life. But God, would you have mercy on me? I'm talking to somebody. You don't have to say, God, my child is acting up. Would you please, God, make it right? But sometimes you need to say, God, they kicked my child out of school. He's rude to every teacher disrespectful to the bus driver, getting high with low self-esteem, but I taught him better. So God have mercy on my child. And before we go further, please know I'm not speaking this over you, but what I know for a fact is that God delivers mercy to those of us who can be honest with what we need from God. I heard a songwriter say, what you need, God's got it. Oh, I feel my help now. Who am I talking to? You are a fragile person. But God says I'm shipping you towards your destiny. You 
you've been tossed over. Uh, but God says, I'm tossing you uh, to your next level. Uh, immediately, Bartimaeus uh, transitions in the conversation uh, from having mercy uh, to receiving his sight. Uh, see, he came to understand uh, that God did not owe him uh, anything, uh, but God was about to give him uh, everything. Uh, that's why every believer, uh, oh, I feel my help now, uh, ought to be able to testify uh, at some point in your life uh, that I've been through some trials, uh, I've been through some pain, uh, I've had some situations, uh, but I came to tell you uh, that it is the mercy uh, of God in my life. Uh, finally, brothers uh, and sisters, uh, when I read this text, uh, I learned this morning uh, that I must learn uh, the power uh, of walking away uh, in good condition. Uh, oh my God, uh, there is pain uh, in this discussion, uh, but there is healing uh, when you walk away. Uh, Jesus turns uh, to Bartimaeus, uh, I can't get no help, uh, who is now struggling uh, with what the answer will be. Uh, Bartimaeus says, uh, and thinks to himself, uh, what will this Jesus do for me? Uh, that's going to bless me. Uh, he had been in the back, uh, but now he was ready uh, to be set up uh, for his blessing. Uh, he had tried it uh, so many other ways. Uh, he had tried uh, and believed God uh, for this and that. Uh, he had already heard uh, every word uh, that was spoken over him. Uh, and now all Jesus uh, could say to Bartimaeus uh, was go your way. Uh, your faith uh, has made you well. Uh, let me tell you uh, about my faith. Uh, not only is faith uh, the substance of things uh, hoped for uh, and the evidence uh, of things not seen, uh, but faith in the text uh, was his determination uh, to reach out to Jesus. Faith was the fact uh, that he knew uh, that Jesus was the son of David. Uh, Faith was the fact uh, that he could say, Jesus, my rabboni. Uh, faith was the fact uh, that he could see uh, that a miracle uh, was passing his way. Uh, and he reached out uh, and grabbed his miracle. Uh, faith is his pain. Uh, faith is his healing. Uh, but faith is uh, the mercy of God. Uh, it is because uh, of the Lord's mercy uh, that we are uh, not concerned. I could have been dead. I could have lost my mind. But God gave me mercy. I could have been sick in my body. But God gave me mercy. Three months ago, my wife could have been planning my funeral. But today, I'm walking in my resurrection. I'm walking in my authority. I'm walking in my better days. Is there anybody who can declare because of his mercy, I thank God that I'm walking. I was blind, but now I see. Who am I preaching to? Walk in your healing. Walk in your blessing. Walk in your breakthrough. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Who am I preaching to? Who's got the faith that made you well? Who's got the power to walk in their way? Who can declare what God has for me? It is for me. Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. It is mercy for me and so my prayer this morning as I go to my seat is that my brothers and sisters it's not about how much you shout in church it's not about how much you dance on the carpet in your own house but my prayer this morning is that you receive the mercy 
of God. Earlier in service, Mahalia said, great is thy faithfulness. I want you to know that in God's faithfulness, God is also declaring to you right now that I'm going to deposit the mercy to you. Wherever you are, every hand lifted, every eye closed, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that I am here because of your mercy. God, I declare that whatever condition has made me bound, thank you, Jesus. I declare that whom the Son sets free is absolutely free indeed. Somebody's getting a blessing right now. And so now, God, if I'm not saved, it does me no good to worship you and not have a heart that's chasing after you. So now, God, I commit that I am a sinner who's been saved by your grace. And God, I declare that I need your mercy. So God, wherever I'm at right now, let me pick up my phone, God, if I'm not saved. And let me declare, God, I'm saved. As a matter of fact, let me call them right now at the church because I want somebody to pray for me and believe that everything's going to be all right in the name of Jesus. So now, God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, because somebody's being delivered. Somebody's being set free. Somebody's being changed. For God, their pain has made the presentation. They know, God, that you don't owe them anything. And God, they can declare and decree right now that I'm getting my power when I learn to walk away well. So now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for worship. And God, we thank you for your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and put those hands together. Come on, just begin to tell God thank you. Come on, begin to give God glory, give God honor, and give God praise. It is the mercy for me. God bless you until we meet again. Ways to Worship with Hopewell Amy Church. We are excited for the launch of our brand new House of Hope app. Simply visit your Apple App Store or your Android Google Play and download the House of Hope Hemingway app. On this app, you will be able to stay in the loop with everything in our virtual campus. With one click, you connect in prayer, message other community members, give your tithes and offerings, and listen to sermons all while reading your app and Bible. Download today. Don't forget to join Pastor along with members of the ministerial staff every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 6.30 a.m. prayer. Also on Saturdays, make sure you share with the pastor and the ministerial staff as they bring you Bible study live beginning each week at 9 a.m. The Frank and Eunice Vereen Porch Ministry is about being a blessing to our community. Simply leave a covered dish, much needed items, baked items, or blessing on someone's porch or front door. You never know, the porch you bless could be the blessing you need. Do you need Wi-Fi access? Simply come to the church campus Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and connect to Wi-Fi absolutely free. Ways to give? You may come to the church campus every Sunday between 10 a.m. and 12 noon where one of our Stewardship and Finance Commission members will happily receive your gifts of tithes and offerings. Also, you can always give by mailing your donations directly to the church office. Or, you can go online and give using our church website, the Givelify app, and now, even on our state-of-the-art digital app. We are appreciative for all you are doing to push the Kingdom of God forward in this season. The House of Hope remains to be blessed because of people like you. Thank you and remember to worship God in spirit and in truth. Until next time, God bless you.